good to have y'all here tonight. Our first night of discovering your spiritual gifts. What is your superpower? We all have superpowers and uh, we kind of got a little taste of a little bit of what the Spirit gives us. Um, well, we got a lot of it with our last lesson, Spirit, Soul, and Body. But also, did y'all hear the kids Sunday morning? That song was the cutest song ever, wasn't it? That's how I memorize the fruits of the Spirit. And that is fruit. That's not gifts, but it is part of the Spirit and what the Spirit has for us. And uh, we know from our last lesson, Spirit, Soul, and Body, that we have every bit of that in us right now. We just need to get it out. So those fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. So if we don't know if we have any kind of gift whatsoever, which I was on the, the end of the spectrum that says, I don't have any gifts. What are my gifts? I don't know what they are. Then at least we can work in the fruit of the Spirit, which is showing kindness, being patient, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's already inside of us. We just need to pull it out. So, um, as I studied, and we'll be in Corinthians a lot, because in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians in particular, Corinthians is the book that um, Paul wrote it, and um, we'll learn about Paul in the upcoming months as well. But Paul wrote it, and he was a converted Jew, and he wrote two letters to the Corinthians. And this is the very first letter. And in this first letter to the Corinthians, he told them, um, 1 Corinthians 1 and 7, he told them, your church lacks nothing. You lack none of the gifts. However, in not lacking in the, any of the gifts, they were on the opposite end of the spectrum than I have been in my life saying, I don't have any gifts over here, to say the opposite of that makes you vulnerable to pride and boastfulness and thinking that you're all-knowing or, you know, uh, the Greek philosophy was really, really big back then. So grabbing hold of a new revelation was, like, fantastic to them. It was like, oh, come in here. Paul or Apollos because they're talking about a resurrection. That, it, that was something new to them. That the, It drew the Greeks to them. And Corinth is in Greece. So all those philosophers, they would come to those big theaters and sit down and just listen to these guys just in their own knowledge and their own wisdom. So Paul, Paul speaks against that, not in ourselves but in, through Christ. So he is actually correcting them in 1 Corinthians of being zealous of their gifts and being prideful with their gifts. So there's two ends of the spectrum that we'll learn about too. And um, I think we all come to a place, I hope we should, come to a place in our life that we think, like, what are my gifts? How, how do I live this out? And... I remember many, several occasions, particularly, that I had these revelations or these questions, big questions in my life, whether they were spiritual or whether they were life questions about what am I here for? What is my purpose? Like, I remember standing in Walmart and I had put my degree on hold because it just got hard. And I was going to school full time, I was married, I was working full time, it just got hard, so I said, I'm taking a semester off. And I, I remember after all, everybody, all the customers were out, Walmart zones, or we used to zone, it means pull up everything on the shelves and make it all look full again before first shift comes back in. That was, we only had first and second shift. And I remember standing there, everybody was zoning, it was quiet in there, and I just remember thinking, I had 
put my school on hold, like I said, and I thought, is this all that you have for me, God? Is this what I'm here for? I, what am I supposed to be doing? I felt so unfulfilled. And that was just on one occasion. And as I dug into uh, my spiritual gifts and studying the Bible, then his word opens up and showed me different things that I was good at and I excelled in, but I didn't think that they were true gifts. And um, I also remember one time um, at Jiber Farm, it was an epiphany moment, and we all should be doing that. <laughs> so it shouldn't have been a revelation, but it was for me. <laughs> but we were at Jiber Farm, and we were putting up the gazebo on the island down there. And I don't even know what the sermon per se was about, but we got to talking, and I pretty much got to preaching, I think, and I, I looked at the guys, LeBron was one of them, I think David Wilson was one of them, and I said, oh, I think I just preached a sermon. <laughs> like, oh, but isn't that what we're supposed to be? And from that moment on, I thought, I can't be quiet. Like, if I see um, an inlet to be able to, to convert that scenario into following Christ, then that's how our language should be. We should be communicating the walk and salvation um, of Christ like all the time. But that was a revelation for me. Like, oh, like I'm not behind the pulpit, but I just preached a sermon just with my friends. Just in, and they, we communicated and it was just awesome. And those are gifts. Those are gifts that we should be sharing and, um, and, and learning more about because as you learn more about then you will see more and you'll pull on it more. Just like we learned about before, everything is already in the spirit. We've just got to pull it out. Draw it out. So I'm, let's hand out the papers and we will get started on discovering your spiritual gifts. These are, we'll have several weeks of this. Let's see. Yeah, that and that. Uh, Charlie, let me get you a set because yours is your teacher copy, so you might want to have one that you can write on. And, uh, okay. Okay, so as we go down this list, the first, number one, number one, is... If your closest friends were to list three greatest strengths, what do you think they would choose? Three greatest strengths. Do y'all have pen? Anybody need a pen? Everybody got a pen? This is for you. What what would they what would they say was your greatest strengths? What do you think, LeBron? My greatest strengths? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think of a good teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so I would think, I would hope they would say that. I think so. And uh, I'm funny. Yeah. I yeah. hope they would say that. And I hope I inspire people. I hope I mm -hmm. influence people to do good. I think so. Those are three things I hope they would say. Yeah. I know I asked one of my coworkers today, I'm like, what would you say? Because if no one spoke up, I was going to have to give, like, what I thought people would say about me. And I'm like, what would, what would you say? And I was trying to see if I was kind. Because <laughs> I hope that I am a kind person. But I don't want to say that about myself. Just like LeBron said, I hope that they would say, I'm kind. And he said, you're a shrewd, cold-hearted businesswoman. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that was the opposite of kind. Thank you. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to share that tonight, but I did just now. So, <laughs> And he said, well, sometimes you really have to be, Karina. You have to, you know. But um, no, I don't think I'm really that bad. 
um, I hope that they would say, I'm kind. Um, but you write down, write down your three. And don't be shy about it. If you haven't written down your three, write down your three right now on your paper. This is a question for you. What's three traits that your closest friends would say that you are good at? Three strengths. Charlie, thinking of others. Yeah. Randy's a good teacher. Randy's a great you, teacher. You know, it's yeah. been, used to, it's been a few years, but used to Julie, when I was teaching a Sunday school class, and I did for 30 years. Mm -hmm. to try. And uh, she would accuse me sometimes of babbling. <laughs> and I said, there's a fine line between talking and babbling. And she said, well, you've crossed that line. <laughs> it's time to go to church. But, you know, mm -hmm. through, through teaching and, and speaking, uh, it has it has called to, to my forefront the study part of it. I can't get up there and do what I do if I'm not in the Word. Now, is there room for improvement? Absolutely. Yes. But just like with watching The Chosen this fourth season, Ooh. Julie wanted to remote. She's a part of ever because we got that little thing that mm -hmm. corner and she drives me crazy. I just, you know, you want to do a spell or something. <laughs> but, you know, she wanted to be able to pause it so I could explain to her mm -hmm. portions of that, that program that, that, you know, I've had to, not that I knew more than her, but it, there was just yeah. a lot to take in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And she'd say, now, wait a minute, this, who is that? And, mm -hmm. you know, but I think, I think by, and I'm sorry I'm babbling again, <laughs> but <laughs> no, I think by not. teaching, it calls me to, to get into the Word more. Mm -hmm. And yep. if I wasn't that wanting to share that in a setting, then I don't know that I would yeah. do as much that, as I needed to That do. is true. Yeah. It causes you that you want to be ready. You mm -hmm. want to... And sometimes, yes, your my notes are way too much sometimes, but it's my study notes. I'm not going to go over all that, right. but it gave me a better understanding of, yeah, the topic in general. Yeah. All right. As we move along with this, let's go to number two. Question number two. As we learn about the fruits of the Spirit, what do all the gifts have in common? So let's look up some of these verses. 1 Corinthians 12, four, and we're going to start at 1, okay, because I think it's important that we read that first part. 1 Corinthians 12, and we're looking for what do the gifts have in common and what makes them different. In common and different. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Absolutely. Now start at the first verse. Oh, okay. Um, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. So what he was saying there, that was kind of like his um, preface to this, is I wouldn't have you ignorant of spiritual gifts, what we're talking about. We don't. Paul doesn't want the Corinthians ignorant of this. And when he says dumb idols, it's not like saying, oh my gosh, they're so dumb. It's not that. It means they don't speak. They're not living. Our God is a living God. So then as we go down to verse 4, it says, now there are diversities. That means differences. That's one thing we're looking for, right? What's the differences? Of uh, Diversities of gift, but the same spirit. What's the same What's in common? The Spirit. The Spirit. 
the Spirit is the same. So no matter what gift we have, it's the same Spirit. And then it goes on to say, but there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but in it is the same God which works all and all, all together. So what's the differences of the gifts? What does it say? The differences of the gifts. The differences of administration, which could be... And uh, this says ministries. Ministries. The, King James, the yeah. New King James Version says there are differences. Um, the fifth verse says there are differences of ministries, ministries. but the same Lord, which, I mean, we see that today. And what, how does your say the next verse, six? Does it say operations? There are differences... Uh, there are diversities of activities. Activities, that's what I have. But the same there. God who works all in all. Min ministries and activities. I took activities. Mine says there are different kinds of workings. Workings? Because mm -hmm. you, if you were in a ministry, say, in Europe, it may be quite different than the United States. Or if you're in a ministry in the Middle East somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be different than here in the states. I mean, that only makes would make sense because culture is going to come in to play and how they do things and so forth. And so, you know, it's there's some things here that may be considered rude or something mm -hmm. you wouldn't do that yep. over there that would be acceptable Absolutely. in society. So, I mean, you you know, and I'm not saying bringing society in there, but there would be a certain clothing that we would wear here in the States versus That's true. somewhere like that. And there's things yep. like that that we don't talk about. But there's mm -hmm. also differences in ministries because a lot of times it has to do with who's leading that ministry. So and it, who their congregation is. Yeah, it has mm -hmm. a bit of a culture for, you know, like some churches here in our county really focus on um, drug addiction and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they have classes for it and stuff of this nature. And that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's not for every church, but it's great for but, that. And you have churches that fit better with um, people that are, you know, maybe really educated like doctors and lawyers and they may feel comfortable going to a, you know, and when I was young, I always thought that was kind of odd, but I think people kind of convert gravitate. together with like-minded mm -hmm. people, but they still love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so they gravitate toward, you know, mm -hmm. Even in, we with see their it. educational background or, or whatever it is. Yeah, it it could be commonality. Is, yeah. Even yeah. like, even in denominations here, we have different beliefs because we interpret scriptures maybe a little bit different way with Church of God and Methodist and Presbyterian and all the different ones. But guess what we should have in common? The same spirit. We should all be worshiping the same Lord. Well, and we even the size it. of ministries. You know, That's some big ministries have a lot of different activities. Some mm -hmm. people like the intimacy of a small church where, mm -hmm. you know. Where everybody and, knows everybody. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of, sometimes it's even put down where they're like, oh, there's only 20 people go to church there. And it's like, but that. That's how the early that, church was. Yeah, and that may be what they're called to do. That They may mm -hmm. be a community church that's for that local mm -hmm. community and they're, they're fulfilling their calling that doesn't mean they're unsuccessful in the no. ministry because they're ministering to 20 30 or 40 people in their you know in their community it's church different. yeah it's just a different in ministries and activities sure it's, it's different there but it's common in the spirit I so don't, i don't think two people could be any different in their spiritual gifts than, than me and you are uh -huh. you would never get her up there to <laughs> speak teach or sing. Uh -huh. But she she thrived in the little kids, mm -hmm. the helping with the jailhouse ministry. Yes. For I don't know, probably fifteen years she was the financial secretary at our other church and, and did the stuff that she was good at. And she wants she wants to serve. Yes. Know? And so she keyed in on what she could do. Uh -huh. She couldn't get up there and say five words without crying. <laughs> right. Yeah. You yeah. know, but I couldn't count you don't want me doing the financial work. You really yeah. don't want her up there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that part but out. Of the video. She doesn't okay. just not do anything. She mm -hmm. does what she's she able to do. That's and, right. And she wants to There's differences, and they all matter. Mm -hmm. Whether that's 
writing on the bags for the jailhouse ministry. That is a ministry. That is an activity. It is very important. Every bit of it's important. And that was me. I thought that if I didn't have a stage gift, that that was the gift. And that's not true. That's not true at all. We'll go through some of those uh, tonight because it is not true. But uh, before we get into those, let's talk a little bit more about, because we need to know how to use our gifts and how they are given before we dive into what are the gifts. Um, you can't, well, I'll say that later. So the next one, number three, how is each gift given? Why is each gift given? So let's read this also in Corinthians, and it's just going to go on down a little bit far, further. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 13. Um, LeBron, you want to read that too? Cause I yes. like your version better than mine. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one to profit, is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another the discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. For the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Wow. So in verse 7, the very first verse that LeBron read, he said to profit what? All. All. So why is each gift given? To profit everyone. To profit all. All. Not just me to be boastful that I'm a teacher and, you know, I'm a singer, and I proclaim, I'm getting up here, and I'm doing a concert, you know. Um, have you heard? We went down here to Stephen um, at Connect City this past Saturday, and he said, you know what? He's the one who sings, Come, Jesus, Come. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you come for a concert, you're going to be disappointed because I come to lead you in worship. You know, it's not about the gift. It's about the gift giver. And um, so to profit everyone is the reason why we are giving gifts. And let's look at verse 11. How is each gift given? Because I've heard this two different ways, and we'll dig into this. It says, verse 11, But all these worketh, so all the gifts work, that one of the selfsame spirit, it is the same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Dividing severally as he will. Who's he? I've heard it talk two different ways. Two different ways. I've heard it talk that he is the one receiving the gift. So the man, the person, the person receiving the gift, that you can get any of these gifts that are laid out, you can take them severally as you will. I've heard that talk. And if you go to verse 31, it says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. That's talking about there's there's no subject there. When there's no subject there, it means understood you in English language. That means you covet earnestly. It leaves out you, but that's what it means. That's how our English language is broken down. But you covet earnestly the best gifts. So that would go along 
with he being the person itself, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So there's one way as he being us. Let's grab a hold of these gifts and get them. And then the second one is God, the Spirit. Because Spirit is a noun. In verse 11, it says they're all of the self-same self Spirit, dividing to every man. See how there's man and Spirit in that? Severally, as he will. Then if you go to verse 18, supporting this, idea is but now hath God set the members every one of them in the body as it hath pleased him so now is God the he because it says right there he puts the members in are the members referring to the gifts it can, to me I'm, I'm not sure my, my, my version Two he's in that. Oh, that's read your version. It says, All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Just as he determines. So that's a different two, two he. Mm-hmm. But it's the same he. It sounds to me like it is. It yeah, it does. But let me ask you this. It whether the he is us as the person, as the gift receiver, as the person using the gift, if that's who he is, or whether it's God. What about this? What about Psalm 37? Delight in the Lord, delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If our desires are his desires and he gives us the desires of our hearts mm -hmm. it could still be either he couldn't it because if we're working together and if I truly have a desire to sing I, I said that last week like I would love Lord just give me three seconds of a voice that I could just belt out when I needed to while I'm teaching or something so that I can sing just a piece of come, Jesus come, so that you would know who it is. But have I taken singing lessons? Do I really have that desire in my heart? Like, is it a burning desire in my heart? No, I like singing, you know, it's fun, and I sing a lot, but I haven't went to the extremes of just, a, I've had burning desires and it's not one of them. So maybe. And I'd I rather sing than I would eat. And that's a big deal. That's a huge thing. <laughs> and statement. see, I don't have a desire like that. I so love maybe to my sing. desire is not lined up. But if God, God uniquely God if God you. uniquely made us, didn't he also uniquely make have us gifted that we can only do there's only things that we can do. Okay. That's because we're and unique. people we can touch. And people mm -hmm. we can touch, and that's why he puts us in certain yeah. communities and has us yeah. grow in certain areas and you know I think about the people that I come in contact with daily in Chattooga County that are a blessing to my life and they don't eat like the people that serve you when you go to a restaurant yeah um, you know I'm hungry I'm ready to eat and somebody's back there cooking it somebody's serving you they're, those and are they all, love to do it yeah they're all blessing people the that pick that up our garbage it, I, I think of the job. garbage man who comes <laughs> by and gets our garbage at our at our manufacturer uh -huh. and then picks it, you know, uh, picks it up at home and all that. I mean, it's just a real blessing. Yeah. I mean, it's a, but I guess, I guess we go in and out of days and never think of that. I, I got a heating and air man that does our heating and air work. And it's, mm -hmm. yeah. he's a, he's a gift of the Lord when you're hot. I mean, it's just, you know, so there's, there's, I just, and they're gifted to do it. Like they come out and they just know it. They know how to do it. They're good at it. Yeah. I had one of my friends, she said her boy just got on to a welding job or something, and she said, I'm so proud of him. I'm so thankful because he'll never work a day in his life because he loves what he does. But isn't it's it, a, that yeah, in ministry it as you it, yes, it fulfill can your be. daily whatever it is you do? Yeah. I mean, Paul was a tent maker by yeah. trade, mm -hmm. and, you know, we know that it's, he was in the ministry, but, you know, there, I mean, it's just 
It's mm-hmm. something to think about is the blessing that people are, but because they're uniquely made, there's people that are mechanically minded and, mm-hmm. you know, and so I think when the Holy Spirit, when someone gets saved and the Holy Spirit begins to work through them, they also work through those unique giftings. That's right. You know, Absolutely. there's people that's more mm-hmm. nurturing than other people. There's mm-hmm. some people that don't, they don't think about kind words and kind of that stuff. It's just not who they are. It's not because they don't love people or care about mm-hmm. their families or their church family. They're just going to be a more coarse. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to say things a little more coarse than others. But, I mean, it doesn't make them less loving or less of who they are in Christ. I, and I think that's where we kind of lose our way sometimes because we figure if everybody's loving and they're kind and, you know, flowers, you know, <laughs> go before them in their pathway that, you know, those people are walking the walk and, the others that we don't really kind of like because their personalities are a little more coarse. They're not really mm-hmm. working in the gifts or they're not really saved. And that's just not true. It's, not it's true. just not a true statement. Yep. But, but we, we are that way. We, we gravitate toward people we like. Yep. And we, we spoke of someone today and the guy helped another guy out. And he said, you know what? His heart is really sweet, isn't it? And I said, you know, if we came from his background, then we might be a little rough around the edges too, wouldn't we? Yeah. But I'm thankful. I said it last <laughs> last Wednesday. I had a little fairy tale um, upbringing, and nothing crazy went on. But except I got ran over twice, and you know, I mean, <laughs> by car. Um, but yeah. And he can touch people that I can't touch because of his upbringing, because he understands. A different life than I understand. But going back to, is it the person or is it God? Verse thirty-one says to covet the best gift. What does covet mean? Covet. Sometimes we think of it as bad because the Ten Commandments has the word covet in it, right? It says don't covet your neighbor's belongings or your neighbor's wife. Uh, we teach it as belongings in the kids' area because you know we don't want to say that, but. Um, it's a bad word, but it's not. Covet means to yearn for. Doesn't that sound like God will give us the desire, desire, yearn, covet? Doesn't that all sound like the same area of language? It does to me. So if covet that best gift, yearn after that best gift, and which is the one we possess. And so I what, think it means to seek diligently yes. through prayer and, mm-hmm. and meditation study. and mm-hmm. study to, to, to figure out of the gift that you have, which mm-hmm. I think everybody has more than one. I do too. Yeah. That you can manifest mm-hmm. the most effective for the kingdom of God. That's right. Absolutely. For the kingdom. Mm-hmm. For everyone. For everyone. This says, but earnestly desire the best gifts and yet I show you a more excellent way the but doctor, I always felt yep. like the best gifts were just like you, know, you got your gifts I mean yep. naturally those are the um, best gifts they're, um, they're yours it's what you have yep. you know I mean my car is the best car not because it's better than somebody beside of me because it's the car God blessed me with mm-hmm. so it's the best car it's, it mm-hmm. may not be the best car like mm-hmm. as far as society is concerned but it's my car Yep. He blessed me with it, so to me, society it's, does not tell us it's that, the best car. It? You know, mine's the best clothes. You gotta have this. This you is what I've got. You know, this is so. I, you know, and I think that keeps you from comparing yourself to other people because mm-hmm. people come and they think that somehow they're lesser in the kingdom because they don't get up and preach, no, or they don't sing, or you know, it's like who am I? And I just, I just don't. You know, I, I am think the best praise and worshiper right there where you're sitting at. Don't put me up here. <laughs> Somebody's got to be on that pew giving it back to you, encouraging you Amen. with worship. Exactly. You know, I don't want it there. I'm with Julie. <laughs> Maybe I have it, you know. <laughs> right, Charlie? Charlie set well, me down I think, one time. I think people... said, <laughs> if you don't sing, get on key. If you don't sing on key, you just sit down. And I think people feel like they're not a part of the body. You know, because they're not the biggest parts of the body. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yep, and we're going to go into that. I and mean, it's just not true. Yep. And uh, Matthew even says, blessed is he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness. Doesn't that sound like a desire, a covenant, a longing for? Yeah. We will be filled. 
So if we're missing a gift and it will fulfill us, I believe if our desire, our heart is lined up with God, that we will receive it. But you gotta want to use it first. Like yes. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You but gotta look. You gotta know. Your mother had a way with children. Mm -hmm. like she, that, that was a gift that, that she had. Even before that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Not now. Yeah. <laughs> she could call all her life. When somebody else could. It was the craziest thing. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Calm. Calm a, a child. Absolutely. So, I'll say God is the gift giver. And if we have a strong enough desire and our heart is right with Him, then He will give us the desires of our heart. So if we strongly desire a gift, I believe he will give it to us. He will fulfill us, like Matthew says. So let's move on to number four. What are two statements we might be tempted to make as we discover our gifts? And I've already kind of touched on this a little bit. This is 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 14 and 6 through 16 is one. So let's read that. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Okay, so what's one statement that we could say? Because what? Because I am... Not a singer, I'm not a part of the body. Yeah, I'm not part. You know, the biggest one we make is I'm not comfortable doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just, just not I, Yeah, I'm not comfortable. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not comfortable <laughs> almost every time getting up here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, teaching body, soul, and spirit, I never taught that before. I have meditated on it, I've studied it, I was not comfortable. Teaching it. That was my first rodeo with that. With that, this one I've taught this and I've studied this. I went through this study probably eight times myself. The exact same book. That's why I keep books, LeBron, because I read them more than once. Um, but yeah, I'm not comfortable with it. Well, we got to get out of our comfort zone. Isn't that what these big motivational teachers teach us? Get out of your comfort zone. You got to step out of your comfort zone. LeBron's done that with me in my life. So this is a statement, because I am not, this is a statement that I'm, I'm on that side. If I look at myself, that's the way I look at myself. I'm not. So this is, I'm not as important. Yeah, the 20th verse says, But now indeed there are many members, yet one body, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor the head to the feet. I have no need of you. So then what would be the next statement? Because I because I am blank I'm have no need of the rest. Maybe because I'm just a member. Well, this of uh, the rest. Or, or should I say just a... Uh, Be because I am the pastor, I ain't got no need for congregation. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would be... Oh. That's the opposite end of this, isn't it? Yeah. People think like that, don't they? This is the pride side of it. This is the pride side. Well, you could say because I, I sing, I don't need a praise and worship leader. Well, sure, you need a praise and worship leader. That's right, right? Yeah, you need someone yeah. working through the week, coming up with the songs, praying with discernment of what the church needs, and that's that's what Pastor James does. So, uh -huh. I mean, it's... Yeah, even when, uh, even when Pastor James don't sing, he's still coordinating. Right. He's still lining things up. And, yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah, because I'm a singer. I don't need a, a band. I can do all this on my own. I got a tape back there. I can go back there and punch the tape and come up here and grab my own microphone. No. We have, so there's two ends of the spectrum. One that feels unimportant and one that feels like prideful. I can do this on my own. So we need to stay in the middle of those two, right? We need to keep this thing on an even keel. But that can happen. That can happen extremely easy. And I have even, I have, I have even been here, even though this is the one I more so gravitate to, like I don't mean anything, I'm not that important, I don't have that big of a role. Sometimes I have said, well this is the way I want it done and this is the way, it's the best way to do it and that's the way it's gonna be done. Like, oh wait, that kind of falls into that category, doesn't it? Like, because I'm a good organizer, that's the only way it can be done. Well, no it's not. It can be done multiple ways and I need people to help me do that. That is one of my strengths, organization. I didn't even know that that was a strength. It come natural to me. And I just thought it was who I was, part of my personality. That's a gift that I can use. And it needs to be used a lot. Just look in our cubby holes and all our closets everywhere in this church house. Can you imagine the chaos without that? That's right. And yeah. we like walking without feet. Yeah, exactly. Just, just, you know, you've got to have all of that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We need everybody here. We need, yeah. I mean, we need every member. Every member, yeah. It's important. Absolutely. So those are two statements. And um, then number five, with which of the above temptations do you struggle most frequently? I told you, I fit in this category because my gifts, when we flip over the board and you see the gifts lined up, my gift, I started with helps. And I just went around, what do you need? What do you need for your children's program? I can uh, cut out the construction paper. I can provide the scissors. Um, what do you need with the jail ministry? I can write on the bags. I can do whatever you need, but I wasn't coordinating anything. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that that wasn't even a gift. And it is. It actually is a gift. Helps. But I felt very low in that. Like, I, I don't, what do I do? But take me out of the equation? We have a guy at work, uh, at work uh, years ago, and they say, oh, he don't really do anything. He don't do that. He don't do that. Well, I said, remove him from the equation and see. And you'll see what he does. You know, maybe it doesn't look like He's doing very much, but remove him and see see what piles up, see what paperwork happens, and yeah, we all. So, what do you struggle most with? And it says describe describe a time when you were faced with this temptation, and I kind of already did that, didn't I, without uh, actually going to step five. But um, but as I studied, ju just like Randy said, this is in my notes, Randy. Just as I studied, and I just took notes. Like my dad was pastor, I just took notes. And I, I got into it, and I studied it. And as I started studying it, well, I want to tell, I taught LeBron. I preached to LeBron, taught LeBron years before I ever started teaching, you know, a, a Sunday school class or anything. I'm just like, LeBron, guess what this says? This says this, and that's related to that. And then it circles back around and does this. And I didn't even realize that God was preparing me to teach. And it was because I was in the Word, like you said, and earnestly desiring that just from, just from the study of it. So let's move on to um, number six in 1 Corinthians 12, 22, and 24, and then uh, we'll move to 2 Corinthians after that. But it says, what hope does Paul offer when you are tempted to feel inferior. So this is this is this first part. Because I'm not that big role, then I'm not a part. 
And what does he give us? Do you have that already, LeBron? 1 Corinthians 12 and 22. Through 24, yes. No much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker and necessary and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable on these we bestow greater honor and our um, presentable parts have greater modesty. And then in, so that tells us that even the ones that look less of a part, the feeble, they are necessary. Every part is necessary. If no one ever purchased the envelopes over there, there would never be any envelopes. We take it for granted that the envelopes just show up. But somebody does that, right? And it tells us in um, the other scripture, 2 Corinthians he, 12, 9 through 10. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore... Most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Mm. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Absolutely. Then I am strong. So. I am strong. Yep. So we are made... For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And sometimes when I get up here to teach, I'll, do, I'll tell you truthfully, I never feel worthy. I never feel like within myself. Now, I'm not saying I know that I'm worthy in Christ. So don't anybody give me a spill afterwards. That I, you are worthy. You're worthy in Christ. I never feel like I am worthy enough to teach that. And I, I have thanked the Lord for that in regard to, don't make me boastful about this. I don't know the answer to every question that someone may ask me. Um, I will go look for the answer and I'll try to find the answer and I'll get back to you. But the person up here doesn't have to be all knowing. I just want to be alive and share what I do know and grab from what some of you guys know as well and let's put it all together right here. Let's figure this thing out together. There's no scholar um, that sits on a pedestal and I thank the Lord for that feeling I feel like, Lord please, it's going to have to be you because I feel like sometimes if I was like LeBron and I was eloquent with words and I, it came to me naturally that I could be very boastful in that. But because I'm not and I learned how to do it and it doesn't come natural and I am uncomfortable every time, I feel like it keeps me in that position to where I won't feel that way and I'm very thankful for that. And it goes along with this. I am strength even when I am weak. That's what that means. He's given me the strength. Lord, if it's not your words, don't fill my mouth with them because I don't even know how to speak proper. Like, it's going to have to be you that, that gives me the words. And he tempers us like steel, like that forged in, the, forged in fire episodes. Have you ever seen that? He puts, you, puts us in the fire and, and tempers us. That's what that means. It makes us stronger. So his grace is sufficient in all of that. Now let's read uh, the flip side to that, LeBron. I'm just using you tonight, aren't I? There's other people that can read this. If the whole right? body were an eye, where would be the hearing? Is that where we're at? Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 17 through 18, the next, where it says what's on the opposite end that Paul offers when you are tempted to feel superior. What does he tell us? Number seven. Yeah, this is 1 Corinthians 12 and 17. If the whole body yeah. were an eye, where would be the hearing? Uh -huh. If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Yes. Just as he pleased. And then in Romans, I love this one. Romans 12 and 3. And three. 
For I say, through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Yes. So don't think more highly, when we're talking about this one down here, don't think more highly of ourselves than we ought. Then what does verse 10 say? Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Giving preference to one another. That means um, preferring someone over yourself. So if you had a song to sing and someone else truly like, now we have to work in as the Spirit gives us discernment as well and not in ourselves, but if someone truly said to Charlie, Charlie, I just really have this song. It's on my heart. The Spirit is, is begging me to sing it. Then Charlie would say, take my spot. But yes, the Holy key. Spirit. <laughs> yeah, but sing on key, sister. Sing on key. Now, Karina, I know that the Lord did not tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for me, Group, so everything we're going to talk about, like they're all ladies, 
<laughs> um, because when I made this study, I made it up on uh, the, the women of the Bible. So pair those up to who said what as you study those. And see if you can do it without looking at the verses. Uh, just knowing those people like Rhoda and Abigail and Esther and Rebecca and Ruth and Mary and Eve. and um, See if you could pair those up and see what their response was. It's kind of a little response thing. And then next week, Charlie will be teaching um, lesson number two. And he'll open up these. And I already gave you a prelude to that, even though that's part of lesson number two. I went ahead and gave it to you so you could prepare for next week. It's opening the gifts. And there's, there's two types of gifts, really, speaking gifts and serving gifts. But then there's some that cross over speaking and serving. And we put that in a different category. So there's prophecy and teaching, evangelism, encouragement, discernment, wisdom, knowledge, tongues, and interpretation. These are all gifts that use a voice. These are speaking gifts. You have to open your mouth. You have to be with people in order to use these gifts, right? They're speaking. Serving gifts are helps and service, hospitality, mercy. How is mercy a gift? Giving, healing, miracles, faith, intercession, even creative ability, which is not cited in the Bible, but we went ahead and put it on the list because um, it, it is useful in the church very much so. And then some that cross over into um, speaking and serving are apostleship and shepherding, leadership and administration. You kind of have to have a combination of, of both of those, um, speaking and serving. So we'll dig deeper into each one of these as the weeks go along and uh, uh, open them up and see what is uniquely ours. What, which ones are ours? And um, does anybody have any more comments or questions? Or will we end? All right. Charlie, would you like to pray and bless us out? Sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Bible study tonight. Lord, we thank you for this gathering tonight. Lord, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with. Lord, and we, we, we thank you for um, giving us gifts. And we thank you for allowing us to use those gifts. And,